I am Lieutenant Commander Nevin Yazaji. I'm the infection control nurse uh, on the ship. Uh, I help with education and implementation of policies as they change uh, to the mission. Uh, isolation and caring for people who have, uh, who have infectious disease is not new to us as nurses and physicians. And so that transition's not hard for us. Um, before, uh, before that, I think for us, it was um, a little challenging to see how, how we were going to do that, how are we going to maintain that type of barrier, because no matter what, people will be at risk. Uh, people can be asymptomatic carriers for a while, and so it's really hard to try and, and, and define that line. So once that line was completely eliminated, it made everything much easier, because then we can just prepare for that every single time. And um, you know, just like a Marine wears Kevlar to go into battle, you know, we can just know that we always have our PPE to go into a patient's room. Uh, we've done an amazing job at uh, containing this infection. I think all of us are, are pretty amazed with ourselves. Um, and it's definitely been a full team effort. Uh, there are some brilliant people on this ship and um, all the way from medical to non-medical. I love our MSCs. So the people on the ship are absolutely incredible. Uh, our chief engineer, he spent a week looking at the blueprints and the, the ventilation system and the entire ship trying to come up with the safest way for us to uh, perform this COVID mission. And uh, he came up with the implementation of the red and green zone and was able to kind of to create a um, separation between direct patient care and non-direct patient care and help reroute the ship in a, in a safer way uh, for us to move about and take care of these patients. And I think that with the implementation of wearing masks full time and having access to either washing our hands and using hand sanitizer constantly has been some of the biggest things that have led to, to our success. So it's been a full team effort uh, and everybody's been on board since the very beginning and everybody has been extremely adaptable and uh, willing to accept those changes as, as we have had to take them. And we're pretty proud of ourselves, uh, I think. Well, I think every little bit helps. And uh, while we are a thousand bed hospital ship, there is a reality to being able to take care of patients safely on this ship, especially ones that require long-term medical care. Um, from what I know of medicine and critical care patients, uh, it's amazing what I'm seeing those nurses do every day in the intensive care unit and on the wards. Um, access and movement around the ship is not easy, and to be able to transport, to move around uh, in these open bay uh, type wards, which is not common anymore in healthcare, uh, these nurses are really overcoming some incredible obstacles, and they've been able to be very successful um, in some challenging situations. Uh, uh, so the ICU nurses are really overcoming a lot of adversity. Uh, one of the uh, successful ways of treating patients who are suffering from the COVID virus uh, is to prone them. And so when they're on a ventilator, you want to flip them over to try and oxygenate the other side of their lungs. It's in a, in a robust healthcare facility where you have a lot of staff and movement and time to plan, I mean, it'll take anywhere from four to six people to successfully prone someone, to turn them over with the ventilator and their tubing, uh, and it is a, is a big deal, and it isn't done very often. Uh, and here now, um, I know that within two days of taking on our first patient, I think we proned uh, a woman and she is now successfully extubated and sitting in the, up in the step down unit and talking, uh, which is really <laughs> incredible. I think all of us are in shock. And so that's an amazing success story. And now just yesterday when I was walking in there doing some rounds, I saw that they were actively proning three different patients you know, within, within the course of three hours. And so now something that used to be um, a very big deal is starting to become the standard of care and something that we can do um, repeatedly within a shift, which um, is, is really remarkable. So um, innovating someone, so when somebody goes into severe respiratory distress, they may need to be put on a breathing machine in order to help them breathe. Uh, and so uh, we will intubate them. So we'll use medicine to help put them to sleep so that we can successfully put a tube down into their lungs and then attach them to a machine that will help breathe for them. We have seen patients come in, they are transferred, transferred in by EMS uh, intubated. 
uh, and sedated and in very critical condition. And I know that, and I know that some of those patients now have transferred down to the step down, which means they have been successfully extubated, and they're able to now like sit up and start functioning more independently and um, hopefully go home. So we're still pretty early in the mission, and we already know that patients who uh, suffer from COVID uh, have a very long medical stay, and so some of these patients require ventilation require ventilatory support for up to eight, uh, eight to 14 days, um, depending. And so uh, it's still early on in the mission where we have a lot of patients who are on board that need to stay on these ventilators, which is another reason why we're not seeing a quick patient turnaround is because we've taken on as many as we can and we need to help them get through this disease process before we can take on more.